Hello Aries, Elsie here to do your reading for the week ahead. Welcome to Fire Day, my friends, my fire family. I hope you're well. Thank you so much for clicking here. I appreciate those of you who are the rider dies that just are always clicking and watching. I appreciate you. Just make sure that you are subscribed because uh, YouTube came by here and did a sweep of all the bots and you may have got caught up in that. Make sure that you're, uh, you're subscribed and if you aren't subscribed yet, I hope that you will. Let's take a look here for the week ahead. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. We're going to look at Aries for the week ahead. Whenever you find this reading, it will always be for the week ahead. We're going to use some oracles and get into some tarot, find out what's coming up for you. We do have the Dolphin Spirit, and it says, this and that are true. Now, dolphins are pretty happy, and uh, they do travel in schools, right? They are very social, and uh, we do have card number 20, which in the tarot is uh, a decision maker, right? That is the judgment card. So I want to say that it looks like somebody is about to breach the surface. That's what it looks like here. It looks like somebody here is about to breach the surface because they have more information now than they used to have. The head of this dolphin is violet. That is the third eye. And dolphins have been known to be quite intuitive, right? Inquisitive, intuitive. And um, yeah, they do uh, They do socialize. They, they live a social type life in schools and families. <clears throat> What else do we have here for Aries, please? Looks like there's some sort of a happy decision that has to be made here, I want to say. And I think that the reason the decision is being made is because your third eye is open, Aries. We do have the crow spirit. It says, co-create with spirit. It always surprises me. Like, you see how many, how many cards are in this deck, right? I think I've pulled this one three times this week already. <laughs> It's like the same messages keep coming back. Hey, let's uh, let's look uh, a little bit forward here. Uh, so it says co-create with spirit. Card number seventeen. Seventeen is the the star in tarot, and that comes after the tower. So I want to say that for some of you, maybe you might be going through a tower. You might make a decision that makes you go through a tower or causes a tower, an upheaval or a a big shift in your life. But then we got card number seventeen, which is the star, which is healing. It's wish fulfillment. It does say co-create with spirit. I want to say spirit has their eye on you. I want to say that, you know, kind of hovering around you, looking from the top down. Um, co-create with spirit is about meditation. Uh, it's also about prayer, right? Whoever you decide is your source of energy here. One more for Aries. And we have the mouse. It says... Tend to the small things. It is card number four. Card number four to me reminds me of stability, which reminds me of home. I'm looking at the four of wands in my in my mind's eye. The particular uh, one that I'm looking at is the one from, hmm, which deck is it? Yeah, it's from this deck. It's from that deck. I forget what it's called, though. I'm not very good with the names of them. But um, that's the particular one that I'm looking forward, looking to. It's it's stability, but it's fun. I want to say make sure that you are tending to the small things. I feel like the tower is coming in between card 20 and 17. I feel like this is the healing, and I feel like it's going to make you, um, it's going to make things clearer. It says tend to the small things. I think that after the, the dust settles, you're going to see that there are things that you overlooked or things that you didn't see there before because they looked really small at the time, but I think they're going to become clear and going to become larger. Something's breaching the surface. Bottom of the deck, it says life is speeding up the antelope spirit, card number two. Now, when it says card number two, to me, that's the, um, in, in the tarot, of course, that is uh, the high priestess. And I want to say that your intuition is on point, that because your intuition is on point, it causes um, you to make some sort of a decision that moves things forward and you start seeing all the things that you didn't see before. Let's take a look at some tarot. All right. So this, of course, is going to be for the week ahead, my friends, right? No matter when you get this, whether it's today or a year from now, it's always going to be for the week ahead. Then I'm going to pull one of these Wisdom of the Oracles. We're going to pull one of those. And that's going to be for the week after the week ahead. So that's going to be the last week of February. And uh, happy Valentine's Day, by the way. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at it here for Aries. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Tell me about the dolphin spirit. We do have the Eight of Wands. Interesting. So it feels like it's a it's a quick decision, but I don't think you make it quickly. What I want to I want to say is that 
things start to move fast after you make this really big decision. It might be a decision to communicate with someone, to reach out with someone with the Eight of Wands, but it could be a decision that starts things moving forward super quick. I think we saw that, yeah, at the bottom of the deck here, the antelope spirit, that things are going to start moving quickly. Tell me about the crow spirit, please. Co-create with spirit. Tell me about the crow spirit. We do have the Six of Swords. Look, I feel like Spirit is giving you the chance to move away, move forward, move quickly, um, away from something, I want to say. And it might be moving away from something that is moving too quickly for you. You feel like it might be moving too quickly. Tending to the small things, what are we talking about here? We do have the Nine of Cups. So I want to say that when the tower falls, it feels like uh, that there is going to be something that you will see. That, like I was saying, the something that fe felt like it was, or you overlooked it because it was so small. And uh, I think that those small things are the little pockets in which you will find your wish fulfillment. We have the tower. There it is. I was talking about it coming between here. The judgment, I feel, is going to cause a tower. And then we have healing. Empress talks about it, and there it is. So we do have the tower energy in the bottom, and it is making way for some sort of a new beginning here. We do have a, um, the Fool card here. It's making way for you to to move, uh, to take a leap of faith into something that I feel is Ten of Cups related. Now, this is the apex of happiness. Yes, it's emotions. It can, it's emotional happiness, but it can be in any situation. Maybe you're buying a home. Maybe you're deciding you're just going to stay home by yourself with the animals. Um, but whatever it is, it's going to make you ultimately happy. It does look like you are going to have to get through something first here, and it might be quite emotional. Let's pull one of these cards. Tell me about the last week of February, please, for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Aries, if you're interested in a private read, please look below this video. There is a 10% off sale until the 25th of February. All services are 10% off. If you wish to do that, there's a code in the description. You'll need to take over to Wizio. Here we go. What are we looking at? We're looking at message in a bottle. So either you're sending a message or you have a message coming in, but it is going to be something that you've wished for. It feels like it's going to make you very happy. Something is about to be birthed. To me, these are all the chakras, right? We've got blue, green, pink, yellow, orange, purple. We've got all of the chakras here. It feels like you're opening up to something. You're opening up to happiness here. We've got uh, card number 26, which is an eight. It is of the self. I feel like you're going to be really happy when you receive this message or when you send this message. All right, let's get back over here. Tell me about the eight uh, wands, please, and why things are beginning to move quicker here. It could be messages. Somebody might be shooting their shot, but it feels like there is a very big decision that's being made here. It says this and that are true. And I want to say that you've decided, instead of looking at it as this and that, you've decided to look at this or that. I want to say that's your decision. That you are choosing between two people, two jobs, two cars, two houses, whatever it is, you are making a choice. And it feels like no, neither path would be the wrong path to take. That's the thing. People think that they made wrong moves. We all make the right moves. We do the things exactly as we're supposed to do them. Whether we feel like we win or lose is up to us, and that's something we work on. But I feel like when it says this and that are both true, right? This and that are true. So it feels like you have a choice to make, but you can't make a wrong decision because both this and that are true. Tell me more about this, please, with Aries. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the week ahead, please. We do have the devil energy, so there is some doubt. It feels like you do have to make a decision, but it, it almost feels as if you know that you have to do it. You need to send the message or you need to shoot your shot or things are going to move forward. But it does give you a little bit of, it feels like it feels like it gives you doubt or anxiety or it feels like uh, you're scared. It feels like fear. Scared you're going to make the wrong choice. I, I don't really don't think you can make a wrong choice. No matter what you choose, I think it's the right path because um, I feel like you are here. You are intuitive. This is Sagittarius energy, of course. But uh, the Temperance card is about being balanced, being clear-minded. It's about making decisions because now you know the back and forth of everything. It feels like you're going to find one moment that is going to be perfect. A perfect moment in time for you to make the decision that you want to make about this or that. 
So the, the temperance card is about patience. It's about healing. It's about balance. I'll look at this a little closer here. Yeah, somebody is trying to find the middle ground here. One more. We have the Ten of Pentacles in the reverse. It feels like you're you're scared to make a decision, um, Aries, because you feel that one of those decisions could be a financial implosion for you. It feels like you're worried that um, one of these decisions, this or that, one is a good decision and one is a decision that could possibly not end up in a long-term relationship or maybe hurt your finances. The Ten of Pentacles is in the reverse. It feels like it will make a very big impact in your life either way, no matter which path you take. But I feel like the fear... Which the devil and the ten of pentacles is telling me that you have a fear that you're going to make the wrong choice and that something's about to implode or everything you've been working for could end up imploding. I feel like you need to strike the balance between this because I'm going to be honest. I feel like you can't make a wrong decision. We're always scared to make a wrong decision, but I really do believe that every corner we turn, every every path we take to work in our car, everything that we do is meant to be that way for a reason. And I think that this is no different here. Tell me what the decision is, please. Tell me what we need to make a decision about here, Aries. What do you need to make a decision about? The Queen of Wands. So we do have somebody here who is the Queen of Wands, Aries, Sagittarius, Leo, someone you're very attracted to, someone who, who has a very um, charismatic uh, personality, someone who's very independent, likes to do their own thing. Um, the thing about the Queen of Wands is they're really not going to check with you before they do their own thing because they are very individual. Even if they're in a relationship, they're very individual and independent. And, and this Queen of Wands is someone who is used to doing their own thing because they've been on their own for a long time. They've gone through a lot of trouble trials, hence the fire, right? They've gone through a lot of trials, carried around a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of burdens, you know, because they've, whatever's come to kill them has made them stronger. That's what's made them stronger. And that's why the queen sits on the throne. It feels like you're thinking about either pulling away from this person or this person has been pulling away from you. It feels like the queen, if we're looking at the queen of wands, we have the Queen of Wands, the Eight of Cups, and the Five of Pentacles. It feels like it goes from, from passion and being together all the time and, and maybe you following the Queen rather than the Queen following you. Um, feminine or masculine, take it as it resonates. And then we have the Eight of Cups, which is, ooh, do I really want to settle for this? Is this what I want? Is it just the fire that I'm after or do I want something more? It feels like with the queen, things sort of fall into a little bit of distance, possibly, or somebody is trying to figure out whether they this is what they want or not. And then we have the five of pentacles. So I think it's a mixture of you're worried about how this is going to affect your financial life. But I think it's just pentacles in general, to be honest. Um, it feels like the decision that you're making is whether you're going to keep someone in your life or whether you're going to make a decision to be very honest about where you're at right now and whether or not you want to carry forward with this queen. Queen of Wands. Take that as it resonates. The Queen of Wands could also be you. It could be you. Maybe you're the one who's decided maybe to pull away a little bit. Maybe not the whole way, but pull away a little bit. But you know that if you take that time to yourself, by yourself, to make a decision, that maybe it might fall into the Five of Pentacles and maybe you'll be left on the outside looking in. Tell me why the Six of Swords is here, please, for Aries. We have the Four of Wands. We have the Nine of Swords. You need to break a cycle here, Aries. It feels like you need to break some sort of a cycle. What is it here? The cycle of holding back. It's a cycle of holding back. It's a cycle of not doing what you want to do for yourself because you're worried that other people are going to be offended, that you had the courage to do what you wanted to do. If you, The Nine of Swords to me is the cycle. The cycle of doing what you always did and getting what you always got. And it feels like... I want to say that you have always made the same decisions as it pertains to the Four of Wands. Now, this is a stable relationship. Maybe you've been in a relationship that's been stable or lived with someone or been married more than once. It feels like this is your cycle. Your cycle is about the Four of Wands. So there's something that you're doing in your home life, in your dating life, in your um, in uh, this 
in this uh, four of wands is like uh, everybody in your home or you get together and you move in with somebody. Maybe you've done that before. But this feels like it's a cycle that needs to be broken here because you worry about it. You worry about, do I have the courage to carry forward? Co-create with spirit. If you need an answer, I'm going to say you need to do more meditation. You need to get on your knees and pray. You need to spend more time in manifestation. Um, you could be dealing with a Leo. could be dealing with Aries Sagittarius possibly. Um, yeah, we've got Sagittarius here as well and Capricorn. It does feel like we're talking about love in your reading here, Aries. It does feel like you're about to make a really big decision. And the big decision is, do you keep following the path that you're on or do you take another path? Do you move away and take another path? I feel like this strength card is twofold. It's telling me that you're holding back from making that decision right now and also that you are trying to find the courage to stare it in the face and possibly break some sort of a cycle that's been going on in your family or your home life for a long while. The cycle is doing what you're told because you don't want to ruffle the feathers. You don't want to rock the boat, right? The boat is right here with the Six of Swords. Should I move away from this Four of Wands and break the cycle? Or should I hold back and just stay where I am right now? I said I was going to do it. I'm going to honor my promise. Should I, should I stay here or should I go? We do have uh, the lovers and we have the, look at that, the Five of Wands. You really are embroiled in battle with the self. It feels like you don't know what to do. You're trying to make a decision, but you've been battling yourself, wondering what you should do. There's competition between two. And, and I don't think you can make a wrong decision. I think that whatever way you go will be the way that you should go. Tell me about the Nine of Cups, please. Tell me about this wish fulfillment. It's like there's been some small things that you've been overlooking in a relationship that you might be in, or maybe you're dating someone new, and you've been overlooking the small things. You're like, nah, we'll work on that later. Nah, we'll work on that later. This person seems super independent, and they don't really want to follow me. They want me to follow them, but nah, we'll talk about that later. It feels like this is your cycle. Your cycle is allowing the little things to get by, and then they end up adding up to big things, and maybe there are things that don't necessarily make you happy. There needs to be a conversation about the Nine of Cups. Is this your wish fulfillment? If this person really is your person, if the person you are going to be with is really your person, then I feel like a conversation is what needs to happen. Very clear, honest communication about this life contract. Are we going to get into this contract with each other? Is this a life contract or is this a soulmate connection? It feels like you're happy there, but it feels like you want some clarity on your wish fulfillment because it feels like you've been overlooking some little things here. Some small things, number four, four of wands. You've been looking, overlooking some things in a relationship that might be very new. We have the page of cups. Ooh, you're just going to spring it on them. Aries, I think that you're going to try and find the right time and you're just going to say something. It feels like it's a surprise. What might be the surprise is maybe they speak with you. You're planning on saying something to them, but maybe they bring it up. We do have uh, the, the Four of Swords. And so I feel like what the reason you've been holding back is to keep the stability. We have four, four, and four. It feels like you're trying to keep the stability, trying to keep the flow of whatever this is. And it does, to me, feel like it is a relationship with someone. So whether it's platonic or romantic, it's a, a friendship. It's somebody in your family. Maybe it's a mother or father, but it could be romantic. It feels like you've been overlooking small things that have been irritating you about the situation for a long while. And I want to say it has to do with the home, has to do with your stability, has to do with your healing. And I feel like it has to, for some of you, do with romantic love. So... I feel like you want to talk about what is going to make you happy. What is your wish fulfillment? And so therefore, we've got message in a bottle. Now, the message in the bottle is card number 15. I'm just going to say that is uh, the energy of of the devil, right? That is the devil energy. That's where we started over here. So it feels like you're scared to bring up whatever you want to talk about because it could end up to be quite emotional. You see all the water there. And what if we sink? What if we sink? <clears throat> Tell me about message in a bottle here. Is Aries going to say something by the end of the month? What's going on with message in a bottle here? Tell me more about this. We've got card one and five. 
right? 15, which is a six. So you could be in some sort of a soulmate relationship. But before you move forward, before you move forward and decide what you're going to do next, I feel like you need to break some sort of cycle, which means that I think that in previous cycles, Aries, you didn't say anything. And that's why it crashed and burned. We've got the Ten of Wands. So somebody has to say something. Message in a bottle is here. Somebody's got to say something that's been holding them down. It's been really heavy. You're carrying something heavy here. And again, Five of Wands shows up. You're beating yourself up inside. I'm not really sure. If I say something, will they leave? Is there competition for this person? If I say something and rock the boat... Um, if they fall out, will they get back in? We've got the Seven of Cups in the reverse. I feel like you make a decision by the end of the month about what you're going to do. I think you are going to ask for conversation here. Um, message in a bottle tells me you're either reaching out to them or they might surprise you. We do have the Page of Cups here, after all. We have uh, the Four of Pentacles. We have the World card. And we do have the, um, the Hierophant, which is the Commitment. Seven of uh, Cups in the reverse tells me I'm no longer overwhelmed. I'm no longer overwhelmed. I don't have to think about it. I choose you. I know what I want to do. So I think after holding this down for a while, after feeling stressed out, like you're carrying a lot of things, that you finally make the decision to talk about it. And um, it feels like this decision causes a little bit of a rift. I'm just going to say because the four, the four of Pentacles tells me that you feel like the person that you're with is holding back. That they're holding back, they're not giving everything to you, there's just a little something that's off. The Four of Pentacles is also being shut off, shut down, being miserly, not really talking about it, not really sharing the Pentacles in the Pentacle world. And then we have the World card. It feels like there, there is some sort of an accomplishment, a milestone, but... But really what it tells me is you must close a chapter. I think the chapter you must close is the cycle that you've been in. It feels like you get into this cycle with every person that you end up with, whether it's romantic or friendship, that you end up not saying anything. You end up overlooking the small things until it gets to a point where you have to heal from it. Because I feel like with the Ace of Swords and the Nine of Cups, that you really want to be clear if you're on the same page as the other person. We do have the Hierophant, which is a lesson learned, but it is also knowing that you are being called to a higher level of spirituality, a higher level of leadership. And so I feel like you really want to make sure that this person is on the same page as you before you move forward here. You could be dealing with a Taurus, a Scorpio, um, a, um, a Leo, an Aquarius, possibly. I just want to talk about this Ace of Swords here. What do we need to get clear on here? Because I feel like you're just going to spring it on somebody here. And I'm just going to say the Four of Swords and the Ace of Swords tells me that it could end up in some sort of a battle. Like a personal difference or egoic issues. Tell me about the Ace of Swords. What is it that you want to know about the Nine of Cups? Is anything here going to change? Yeah. Okay, it looks like somebody has been holding off change. And I feel like you've been ignoring that they're holding off change. This person does not want to transform. They're not interested at this time, maybe not in the future, but at this time, somebody is holding off changing. They're holding off the end of something. I don't know if that's you or if it's your person, but it does look like somebody is holding off the ending of the Two of Cups and the Lovers. Now, I feel with this energy here that it feels like you think that if you say something to this person, they're going to say, look, I'm out. If we're going to if we're going to split hairs with this this card here overlooking the small things, if we're going to split hairs, I feel like this is where the argument starts. You you bring it up. And the five swords ensues. It starts with the ace of swords and all you want is clarity. And then it moves to the four and the one, which is five. It moves to the battle. And I feel like what you want to know is, are we in this together forever? 
Or are you are you ever planning on growing or changing or moving? Because the death card in the reverse, to me, is someone putting it off or holding off change. Someone who really isn't growing as much as you are or as quick as you are, whether that's a friendship or a love ship. We do have the Queen of Cups. You could be dealing with someone who is Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer, feminine or masculine. This person has got you on the outside. They got you at, at arm's length here. And I feel like you need to make a decision about what you're going to do. Am I going to hang around here for a long while yet and go slow and see what this person wants or am I just going to tell them the truth and the truth is is that you think that you two y'all are, are soulmates but I feel like you're somebody's keeping you at arm's length and they're not giving you all the honesty they're taking their time with being completely truthful to you I'm just going to let that stay right there tell tell me if it, it resonates with you my friend I'm going to go for now thank you so much Aries for being here I will go but I'll be back because I'm always back love you guys I'm out for now bye bye